on Australia's Business Channel. Welcome to In Business. Thanks for joining us on In Business. Well, Russell and Kogan always had a passion for having the latest technology, but there was one major obstacle, price. So he went about finding a way to source top quality products and cheap prices and made it his business to pass on the savings to customers. He now runs Kogan, an online seller of LCD TVs, GPS systems and digital frames, most of which are sourced from China with quality assurances. And it's big business. The company's been in operation for a few years and he already expects Kogan to turn over around $5 million this year. Not bad for a 25-year-old. And to tell us all about his business, Rustland joins me now in the studio. Give us an, an explanation of what Kogan is. Well, Kogan's a direct online business model that cuts out all the middlemen and that creates savings for the consumer because, you know, typically a product would go in China from a manufacturer to an agent, then to an importer, then to a distributor, a wholesaler, and then to the retail so store. So it's costs yeah, added every, all along the everyone way. Everyone wants their 10, 15 per cent along the way, and by the time the product gets to your shelves in the retail stores, you're paying way too much than you have to. The Kogan business model gets these products in China, ships containers of them here, and sells them direct to the public through our internet website and through our eBay store. OK, well, we'll get into detail about your internet website and, and the business of eBay a bit down the track. But first of all, where did the idea come from? Um, it, was a, it was a two phase sort of process. I, I was working at the time and I wanted to buy an LCD TV. Went to look in the retail stores and the prices were so excessive, I had a pretty good job and couldn't afford one. So I'd always been, you know, importing phones and things like that because I always wanted to have the latest phone and gadgets. So I went and sourced a few LCD TV factories in China, got prices of them to see, you know, how much this sort of stuff cost. Thought maybe, maybe, you know, source them from overseas, bring in a sample or something like that. And, you know, when I saw the prices, I saw the gap in the market and I'd had quite a bit of online and IT experience. I, I, well, I thought, well, you know, we can cut out the middlemen here and give people great value. OK, so, so you mentioned it before there, before Kogan, you were doing something a bit different, weren't you? What was, were you doing? Yeah, I was an IT consultant, so I'd worked at GE for a while and then I was a consultant at Accenture Management Consulting. What is it about technology that interests you? Just the value it adds to people, how, you know, it lets you do things easier, it makes our everyday lives easier and it makes, makes our you know, quality of life better. Cavemen used to use a rock to, you know, to bang things. Now we use a nail gun. So just, you know, the technology is part of evolution. We're, we're getting tools that allow us to enjoy life more, do things easier, do work faster, better, quicker and more efficiently. So, yeah, I love the advancements that we make. OK. I'm interested to know in how the company was started. When was it started? And, and in terms of funding, how was it funded at, in the very early stages? Yeah, what happened was after I did this initial investigation and found, well, I do want to bring some TVs in, but I've got nowhere near the capital to bring in a container load of TVs, which is the absolute minimum that any of these factories will manufacture for a you. A container load, how many, is that? how many TVs is that? It would be around, depending on what size, but on average about three, 400 LCD okay. TVs. So at that time, I was, my mum was doing some furniture shopping. I went round with her and I saw her pay in full for a table that she was told will be delivered in 10 weeks. And I said to her, well, why'd you just do that? And she said, well, that's how it works. Mm. I thought, well, if, you know, if people don't mind doing that sort of thing, well, what I can do is run a pre-sale to get the initial container on the way. So I ran a pre-sale, got the initial container on the way. The feedback we were getting from customers online was incredible because at this stage they were buying a TV for $1,000 that yep. they'd normally get for three to $4,000. So they were happy to wait that extra bit of time. And you know, once we saw the success of that and sales just kept rolling and rolling in, then you know, the business expanded and you know, we've got a few containers coming in every week now. So. It's going really well. I know that my old folks don't like to pay full price for anything. I think that's the European blood in them. Um, or I guess it's anyone. Uh, you sell essentially TVs. There's also GPS units and digital photo frames. So they're, they're essentially your, your three um, core, core, at, core products? At the moment, yeah. They're all obviously technology related and whatever's the, Why just the latest. Why 
Uh, there's mass markets for those products at the moment, so demand affects what products I, I bring in a lot. Um, we are also looking to expand our product range mm. as well, but LCD TVs and GPSs are the two most demanded consumer goods at the moment. And it's them that I'm able to give the most value to consumers in because if I buy them by the container load and buy in quantity from China, they're the ones I can bring most value to people through. But there, there are multiple other products in the, in the range, including like GPS watches. And we've just introduced LCD TVs. We've built in DVD players and mm. digital tuners. So the, the range is always expanding and you know, we do have quite a bit of plans for new products. When do you know that it, it's going to be the right time to introduce a new product? Um, I get a bit of a feeling myself because Intuition. I'm always, yeah, <laughs> I'm always looking out for the latest technology and thinking like, well, that's going to be a winner. Um, also, through online means, you can judge demand of something. How many people are searching a certain term? How many people are looking for this and looking for that? And you can get a good feel of, well, this is the up and coming technology. There's X amount of people looking for it as mm. opposed to Y amount of people looking for something else. So, it, it, yeah, through the online means, you can get a, a good indication of which products we should have in our range. The other interesting thing that, that you've decided to do is to sell your products via the internet and both through your website and through eBay. Yeah. First of all, with, with your website, why did you decide A, just to do it on the internet and, and, and why your website and what do you have to do on your, your website to make sure it's all run efficiently? Mm -hmm. So the question you're asking, what are we doing differently on our website mm. to eBay? Or? No, no, just in general, why, why just use the internet? Okay, the internet can create a lot of efficiencies. The internet's a wonderful tool for information flow. So the internet allows us to find our suppliers. It allows us to you know, check and communicate our orders with our suppliers, but also then to reach the customer directly. So whereas in the past, for instance, distributors and wholesalers couldn't reach the customer directly, they need to sell in bulk to retailers. With the internet, you can target your customers and you can reach them directly. So it creates a lot of efficiencies along the way. And yeah, the internet's the most cost-effective way of reaching your customers. And it's also the most cost-effective way for educated consumers like Kogan customers to, you know, target their search and say, this is exactly what I'm looking for, and then find it on the net, not have to spend any money on driving around or petrol or parking or all the other headaches we associate with retail shopping. And, and like I mentioned, you've, you've got your Kogan website and then you use eBay. Why, why do you need both of them? Why not just use Kogan or just use eBay? Okay. eBay is the world's biggest marketplace, so it can't be ignored. Uh, there's thousands of customers every day looking at our eBay store. eBay also allows us to determine the natural market prices of our products. So everything we sell at 99 cent no reserve, which means in effect, if only one person is bidding on our TVs, they could win a 46 inch TV for 99 cents. How often does that happen? Not very often at all, because like I said before, it's a high demand product. We've got lots of people watching our auctions all the time. So yeah, through the eBay system, 99 cent no reserve, we get the natural market price and people enjoy the whole bidding process and things like that as well. Then it comes to our website, which is more of a click, click, buy sort of thing where you get a lot more corporates, people that don't have the time to participate in an auction or don't, don't like using eBay or don't want to go through the whole online auction process and just want to click buy and put in their credit card details. We've got that option available to them as well. And, just, and very quickly, as a business, how, how much does it cost you to run um, a selling business, I guess, on eBay? It's, it, it's all relative to how many sales you make. eBay makes a percentage of of all your sales, but if you streamline your processes and get an eBay store running efficiently, there's there's a really good opportunity to do some business and cut out all the middlemen and provide your customers with unbelievable value. What makes Kogan products so different? Le and let's say uh, for, for t LCD TVs then. Okay, the main difference comes in the business model that gets the product to your door. By cutting out all the middlemen, we're able to sell the same technology as the retail stores for a, a much lower price. Now, we, we get the products direct to the consumer and I'm also in China all the time, you know, sourcing all different components and seeing what makes the best value for money TV as such, because that's what I'm all about, making the technology more accessible for all. 
or so, consumers. So say the popular 32 or 37 inch LCDs, how much would they cost? So a 32 inch, about $800 at the moment. Some people, when they're lucky at auctions, can get them for around the 700 mark, but yeah, around the seven to 800. Okay, why source from China? Uh, it's the world manufacturing capital. It's where all the latest machinery is. It's where, you know, they've got the most quality control staff and it's where all of these products are made at the moment. It's the manufacturing hub of the world. And yeah, it's where the majority of this technology is made. And the warehouse you source your panels from, yeah. other brands source it from there as well? There are, yeah. Well, what it comes down to in the end really is there's four or five different LCD panel brands in the world, mm -hmm. but there's thousands of different brands of LCD TVs. Okay, so, 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 so say your Sharps, your Samsungs, your other brands, they, they pick one of these four, four or five actual panels. Yeah. And so you, you essentially pick one of those as well. Correct. For each, for each different size, I'll assess the different panel options that there are when I'm over there. Obviously, take into account the picture quality that I'm getting out of it and also the price. And then I'll get the best value for money one and build it into a TV solution. And that's what you can see in the Kogan range. So essentially, if it's the same kind of panel, why aren't these more expensive brands cheaper in price? Their business model. When you've got, you know, such big marketing expenses firstly and then also distribution expenses of getting it from importers to agents and then you know through your whole wholesale distribution channel everyone wants their 10 to 15 percent and you know everyone wants to make money off it and the training costs involved as well each time a new model comes out they have to train everyone you know down the whole chain of how to deal with it so it's a very inefficient process and that's what causes such high price tags in retail stores. Some critics might, might talk about these signalling processing software or backlight mechanisms. For the TVs, they may not be as good. How does it compare? Well, like I said before with the LCD panels, how there's only a handful of manufacturers and thousands of different brands, the same sort of theory applies to the backlighting mechanisms and the signal processing boards. There's only a handful of manufacturers of these things in the world. So I test all different ones, how they interact together and look at the picture quality I'm getting, the quality of build, how easy to use the TV is and then find the, you know, the best value for money solution and put it out there on the market. Lately we've had, we've had a few issues or, or some businesses have, have had a few issues with things that are manufactured in China. For example, the toy industry, right? Um, with with some, some faults and, and things like that. How can quality be assured with your product? Yeah, what we do with all Kogan products is there's a very strict quality assurance procedure that they undergo in China. So when dealing with new factories, we always do a pre-manufacturing inspection with our quality inspection team will make sure that all the machinery in the factory is okay. Then we'll do an inspection during production to ensure that they're doing everything to Australian standards. And then we'll do an inspection after production to make sure that it meets the you know high quality criteria that we set for the Krogan product range. And so of course there's warranties on top of that? Definitely. Every Kogan product comes with a one year on site warranty which covers every nook and cranny in Australia. So wherever you are, you'll never have to leave your house to have that, the That's the other thing, because you're on online service so you, you need people to come to you if there's an issue in terms of warranty. Correct, yeah. And we have over 300 and service, 380 service agents Australia-wide that are ready to leap to action if there's any problems with any Kogan product. The other interesting thing is I want to know who exactly is your target market because how do you sell a brand that seems to undercut a premium brand by, by so much in terms of money when you've got some people out there that, that'll say, I don't mind paying an extra three or four hundred dollars for a, a Panasonic or a Sony or a, um, or a Grundig because it's a well-known brand and there's the, the, the perception that it's yeah. a better TV. How do, you, how do you deal with that? Well, I believe my target market is educated consumers. So it's someone who is able to know what they want, sit down on the internet, do a search, do some reading, read up on a few technologies on Wikipedia, line up three or four different specs of different TVs next to each other and say, well, at the end of the day, let's leave the brand alone. What am I actually getting here? You know, what are the features? What can it do? What can't it do? What can I plug into it? What can't I plug into it? And 
those educated consumers that do that, majority of them will buy Kogan because once they line our specs up against anything else out there in the retail stores, they'll see that in terms of value for money, this is the best solution. In terms of expansion plans, are there plans to, to go to, to physical retail stores or, or will it purely remain an online store? It will remain online. If I went to retail, I wouldn't be able to provide the same sort of value that I am at the moment. There'd be extra costs involved in the model and I wouldn't be you know, true to my word of making technology more affordable for all Australians. And, and at the moment, is it just Australia or are you looking to, to, to move internationally? Today it's just Australia. By the end of March we will have expanded our operations into New Zealand and then we're getting you know, really strong results and really good feedback from customers at the moment and getting a lot of repeat business and a lot of word of mouth um, advertising from our own customers. So from the feedback we're definitely looking at expanding overseas and targeting more overseas markets. So that move into New Zealand, when did you decide, hey, let's move into New Zealand, it's a good time to do it, and, and what kind of research did you, did you do to, feel, fit to figure out whether New Zealand wanted Kogan in, in, as a brand there? Yep. Um, happened about six months ago. Well, we thought, well, you know, there's such good demand over here. They're a close neighbour. They should be very similar to us. We looked into it, obviously, look into the population spreads, where you're going to put warehouses, and also they have several trading websites like eBay in New Zealand. They use eBay, but they use another one as well. And you can look at completed sales and history and also what are people searching for? How close is the demand in New Zealand to the demand in Australia? And obviously it's not as much, but it's a, in terms of space and things like that, the distribution's got to be a lot easier and you know I'm sure New Zealanders like a bit of value as well. And, and just to give us an idea before we wrap of, of how the business has grown, what kind of um, turnover are you expecting this year and, and how, how does it compare to say your first year in operation? We've experienced so far about a 20% a month increase in sales which has been phenomenal and you know, a lot of it comes down to our emphasis on customer service and ensuring that absolutely every Kogan customer is happy. We've put over 30,000 products on the market in our first two years. So growth has been incredible. And, you know, the first container had 100 TVs in it. So 100 TVs in the first three months compared to 30,000 sold over the wow. next two years. There's been quite a lot of growth there and I think that you know we're on to a winner and we're working hard every day to make the model even better and better and to make technology more affordable for all Australians. Well a couple more things before we go the whole debate between plasma versus LCD you've got a minute to explain your case yeah um, which one is better and why? In my opinion LCD is a superior technology it uses less power it's thinner it's lighter it's got higher resolutions. In Vegas, they just unveiled some incredible resolutions on LCD screens. They don't suffer from burn-in. Plasma's better in that it's got better blacks. And if you're looking for a big, big TV, they're probably better value for money at the moment. But in terms of technology, LCDs are much better technology. And now that they've got um, OLEDs coming up and things like that as well, that's where the future's heading. But LCD is better, in my opinion. Okay. Russell, before we go, let's do the, um, the in-business top ten questions. Right. So just very quickly, what was your first job? Collecting golf balls around the golf course and then selling them back to the golfers oh, at the weekend. You started somewhere. Your worst job? <laughs> Call centre work. Okay. In your current business, what's the biggest challenge you faced? Raising capital. What's the biggest mistake you've made? Hiring recruitment firms, I'd say. Okay. Yes. B biggest success? The biggest success so far, I'd say the 30,000 products in, in two years. It's been such good growth, definitely. Who, who is your greatest competitor? The clock. The greatest role model? Richard Branson. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Working for Google, I'd say. Your business mantra? Every proposition's got to be win-win, so only enter things that are win-win for both people. And finally, your greatest business tip? Is think big, give it a crack, you know, give it a go, otherwise you won't know what's going to happen. And you certainly did. Russell and Kogan, thank you very much for your time. To Thanks, appreciate Richard. It. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on In Business.